with your hosts, Lauren Dare Owens, Justin Tanucci, and Taylor Reyes. This is the Music Project. Hey guys, it's Lauren Dare Owens. Justin <laughs> Sinichi. <laughs> and my name is Taylor Reyes. And we actually have Garrett Palmer back in studio with us. You made me run the board by myself, all by my lonesome. You chose to do it. <laughs> That's I did choose you to do it. You did a good it was, job. It was fine. Thank you. We made you. it through. But um, we have a great band on today called Hour 24, but before they come on, I want to ask you a few questions, because Garrett was at Comic-Con in San Diego. I was. Oh, oh. He's finding his He's, mic. There we go. <laughs> you turn them all you're, on. You're not a very good board runner. He didn't even know what mic you were on. I Whoa. grabbed the we're closest have to, to go back to Lauren. You have <laughs> go no. for it. I'm sure Lauren did a great job. Aww. But how was Comic-Con? Comic-Con was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It was a blast. I was able to make it last year, and this time was more fun because I kind of knew what I was doing. There's some different stuff, but yeah. I had the general outline. It's like, okay... Here are some of the panels I want to see. Meet up with some friends. Oh, go over to the Nintendo or Xbox mm -hmm. lounges. You also had a couple friends who were in panels so, yeah. and things like Scra that. So. Uh, go find free stuff. Yeah. That's the big oh, thing. Oh, free stuff is the best stuff. Yeah, th they were really big on bags this year. Because mm. the bags like they were giving bag? out. Well, they give you a bag whenever you sign up to store your stuff in. And Makes when they sense. switch to new bags, they're lighter than the old ones, so they break more easily. <laughs> so you go in to pretty much all these, like... Wait, okay, Booths are they like, or like grocery bag kind of bags? Or no, they're, they're like, massive. Yeah. Oh, they're, so they're, like, they're like real bags. Big. They're really big. Okay. I can bring one in. I have seven. <laughs> from co the seven of the Comic-Con bags, and then there's like a ton of the smaller ones people were handing out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like lanyards and necklaces and stuff. But uh, some highlights... So, wait, so you kind of get all this stuff that's free, and at the time you're like, this is great, and then you get home and you're like, I have 19 lanyards, what am I going to do with this? Pretty much, yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> use lanyards on a daily basis. Yeah. I don't think most people do, but... Uh, I have to disagree. I use it often. Go to high school. There you go. And <laughs> go everyone to has a lanyard of some sort. S uh, see, oh. we're homeschooled. We're not supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, have a, I have a really basic one. I'm a, I have an active one, so... Okay. The well, highlights of um, okay, uh, Scream Queens premiere. Mm -hmm. I got to see Scream you Queens. You said Jamie Lee Curtis was hilarious. Y y Jamie Lee Curtis was there, and a few of the different people in the cast were there. That's so cool. it was like, oh, Kiki Palmer showed up, and Ooh. Leah Michelle, and Emma Roberts. What, but was Tom DeLonge there, or am I mistaken? Uh, no, I don't. I, I didn't see Tom DeLonge. He, he yeah, he had there. a no. He had a Comic Con interview. Okay, cool. Yeah, he was at Comic Con. That's I cool. didn't watch the entire interview, but he but was at he was there for yeah. some reason. A every, tons of people show up and just do stuff there, but Jamie Lee Curtis just kind of started cussing at us about how oh, we awesome. should be excited because this is effing Comic-Con, and she's Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and it was like, thanks, Jamie Lee Curtis. I met Jamie Lee Curtis once she played, at an event, she, she, and she, I think she was just really drunk. Yeah. Well, She she, played, she, she seems like a lot of fun. Well, she played my mom. On an episode she of New Girl. Mom? Yeah, on an episode of New Girl, she was oh, my really? mom. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. And <laughs> totally took that out of context. <laughs> no, on an episode of New Girl, she was my mom, and I remember just walking in, and she's like super happy, but she she has a mouth like a sailor. I loved it. Yeah. But she she felt really bad because at the time I was fourteen, and she's like, oh crap! Like she was saying all these words, trying to cover up and not say them, but she just like kept saying more bad words that I can't really say on air but it, it was just it, it was so funny and she was so nice but yeah I totally know what you're talking about just like super I also find it funny when yeah. adults do that like <laughs> they when they like swear in front of a kid it's like that eight-year-old probably knows 200 more swear words than, the, but it's you, weird whatever. like I feel like little kids know more swear words or cuss words I know than adults because, this okay. time well because, it's a project for them it's yeah. like what bad words can I learn today <laughs> and then when you're you like know? a little kid you don't know how to use them correctly so then like, you just you, put them like randomly you put in the, you put the wrong like oh like you just like say I'm not I can't really go on with this <laughs> joke but like you just say all the wrong words in the wrong context and just know. like At the most inopportune time yeah. you're, you're squandering I them. think the biggest time when that happens Comic -Con is when Jamie Lee Curtis cussing at children where has this train gone my last thought on that, though, is I think most of the time it happens when parents that are young adults who cuss a lot then have kids, 
and then they try to cover up because they want to set a good example for their kids, and then they just it turns into a big mess. Yeah, it, it just gets messy. Like I know when I hang out with my like friends, like younger siblings, I try not to like cuss too much, but it just comes out way too yeah. much. It happens. Anyways, so it. Queen, segway, wegsay, segway, wegsay, wegsay. Scream que- Queens was definitely a highlight. That was fun. Yeah, I made it to the Cartoon Network panels because cool. Zach was there, so I mm-hmm. went to go see that stuff. So it was uh. Regular show, Uncle Grandpa, Adventure Time, Steven Universe, and then they premiered some of the stuff from the new one coming out called We Bear Bears, which has Bobby Monahan from SNL, and it's three bears that like walk around on top of each other, <laughs> and they want to be friends with humans. Yeah, it's and like that's a different type of bear. Right. It's like a polar yeah. bear, a brown bear, and a panda bear, something it's, like that. It's uh, like brown bear, po- uh, panda bear, and ice bear. Oh. Ice bear? Yeah, it's not polar bear. <laughs> it's like ice bear. <laughs> ice bear. That's funny. Is the name trademarked or something? Like, I, no polar I don't know. Bear. I feel like that could be a thing, though. Like, I, on a kid's show, you, I guess there's a polar bear or something. You, maybe you can't use that. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think Sa- right. Santa might have the patent for the word polar. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he does. He has that. an unlock, so no one else can use it. Dude, yep. Santa's just hogging things. Like, it's not fair. Yeah. Okay, my last question. <laughs> Where is this going? My last again? question about Comic Con. How was Sharknado? Because I'm sure that was a big thing. Okay, 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 okay. So Sharknado (laughs) this year and then last year too, they went all out Mm -hmm. on advertising. And it's really kind of annoying. (laughs) So what Sharknado did is they would have a bunch of people, like girls in like shark dresses. Wait, like, are we talking like dresses or like Katy Perry left shark, right oh, shark? No, costume. like dresses, Dude, not I like love... a shark costumes, okay. like actual dresses, okay. and then like the head part was a shark, okay. and they would have some <laughs> kind of <laughs> chant, like a headband and thing. then like a, sometimes they would be standing there and trying to hand out stuff and be chanting, and then sometimes they would sing, at, and they would like play some kind of song, and then occasionally you had people come out on stilts dressed up as like. Uncle Sam sharks. So it was guys dressed up as Uncle Sam with a shark going through their belly. And then when that happened, they would kind of march around and it got really, really obnoxious mm-hmm. with well, all of them fun. doing that. And then you have the people who are picketing because going to Comic Con is a sin, apparently. Oh, yeah, we and get that gonna, in sometimes. Oh, you're going to burn in hell. So oh, they were religious people. Yeah, 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 there's, yeah, there's a lot of them there. And then you had people from this show called Damien <laughs> and their advertising campaign is they were all black. Where isn't the show about like Satan? Something like that. I don't, yeah. I assume so because <laughs> they had six 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 badges and the show's called Damien. So I'm just gonna guess it's about Satan. And then they just would start yeah. screaming at the religious people. So Didn't they have like blood spattered signs or something yeah, like that? Yeah, the signs just, like, like had like oh like he is coming. Like the Dark Lord is here. Like, <laughs> oh or, man, so they're the best going that is playing with Dude, fire. That is so good. <laughs> oh, I, re- yeah. I, wanna, I would, literally playing with that'd fire. That'd be such a good like Twitter wow. fight. Oh my god. He, he, they, <laughs> they, they, they like yeah they have these people paid to be Satan is going. And then, like at other <laughs> times, you have these people dressed up as soldiers for the show called the like, Colony. That's like on like they had pretty much all the Ubers and a lot of bikes and stuff mm-hmm. like that with them. And so you have these soldiers just walking around while these people are screaming. And then there's for uh, Outlander, they got a group. They had some people playing bagpipes and drums. And then they had a few random like. I guess guys in papers. really tight white shirts wearing kilts that would just scream, <laughs> but they're all really ripped. So they would like pose with people and just scream. Okay. So you have screaming Scottish people with bagpipes and drums. Uh, soldiers are marching around as sharks are singing as Satanists are screaming <laughs> at that's great. religious people. That's, and that's so wonderful. Right out front. That's right out front too by the train. It's like right when you walk in, like oh, this is what I'm walking. Yeah, it's into. like in Hall H. You have to kind of like walk, yeah. walk across the street, but to get there from the the Gaslamp District, which is where you the Gaslamp District there, is awesome. It's a lot of fun. I spent. It's so expensive to eat there. Yeah. They jack up the prices. Yeah. I went I've, to this I've spent I, jack it up. I spent like yeah, a whole <laughs> a whole week down there at the Hard Rock Hotel, and I just that sounds like a could lot of like fun. Yeah, that'd be really roam fun. around. Yes. just all week, and there's some cool record stores down there, and awesome like restaurants, and it's really really pretty. But... I had this well, thing. It was an egg roll, but the size of a burrito. So and it had roll? like, and it had like what you would normally put in like whatever you order at Panda Express wrapped in the egg roll. Hmm. That's really cool. And it was like this crispy burrito egg roll. So you with like chow mein and you rice. You ate and a Kung crispy Pao burrito chicken. egg roll with Kung Pao chicken and rice and chow mein. Wait, it was like Wait. in San Diego at the in, gas lamp in the gas lamp district. Somehow we have gotten from Comic Con to egg rolls in the gas lamp. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm just trying to like picture this giant burrito egg roll with what was in it? It was delicious. 
I'm oh, with, sure it was. With just deliciousness in it, right? Oh, well, yeah. I'm glad you had a good time at Comic-Con. Thank you. It sounds like a blast. It I'm was. so sad I wasn't there, but, you know, someone has to go. Someone Next has to, year, someone has to child board. badges. Let's do it. All right. Child. We'll do it. Oh. All right. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick little musical break, and then we'll come back with our guest, Hour 24. We put on um, a song by our good friends, The Good Mad, and you picked Sail, right, Garrett? Sail on. Sail on. All right. So this is Sail on by The Good Mad. Back with the music project brought to you by Hubert's Lemonade, our little pop of the day. Pop. I would pop it, but I kind of opened mine because it's so good already. That so. was Sail On by The Good Mad. I love those guys. They just released a new EP, so make sure to go check them out. They're like one of my favorite in lo- in studio performances we've ever had. Like when she brought in her violin, fiddle, thing, I was just blown away. They are so talented, and I love them from the bottom of <laughs> my heart. So. That was Sail On by the Good Mad. But now we are back with Hour 24. How you guys doing? Hey, we're good. doing good. Uh, do you guys mind just going around saying your name and your instrument, and your, your weapon social of choice? security number, <laughs> and uh, your credit card Your astrology sign. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mike, I play drums. Can you say that again in, into in the, the microphone? In the mic one more time. <laughs> My name's Mike, I play drums. Okay. I'm Rachel, I'm the lead singer. I'm Cody, I play guitar. I'm Dan, and I also play guitar. Mm-hmm. And I'm Chris, and I play bass. Awesome. So you guys you guys are not from around these parts of California. Nope. No, no, we're what? from Michigan. Michigan. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, a, just a really quick question. Do you guys know a small town called Holland? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I have a friend that like lives there. I don't know. I, just, I thought oh, it would really? be really cool to ask. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so how did you guys all come together and meet and form Hour 24? Well, um... Dan and Rachel like met each other when they were pretty, pretty first young grade. kids. First Aww. grade. Um, and they just kind of like stayed friends all the way until now. And then I met Dan in junior high. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just started the band in, I think we were like juniors in high school. Something like that. Seniors in high school. And um, then <coughs> we met Mike and we met Chris through like various friends in the music scene in Toledo, Ohio and stuff like that. So 
Awesome. Well, I met Dan and Rachel on a cruise about a little over a year ago, and we had some midnight jam sessions in the back of the boat, um, which was a lot of fun. But it's my first time. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's how we met. And I remember, we, I think we met on the first day, randomly, and then throughout the cruise, we just kind of kept meeting up. And you guys are so cool, and we've had you on the show once before, but your van broke down. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't actually make it in. Desert of yeah. Utah. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was the interview. Yep. <laughs> wow, it's all coming back, though. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we need, we we need, need to get a you a mic on you. <laughs> a mic for Mike. Uh, um, yeah, so My exception. I, you guys said you're coming back to California, so I'm like, okay, I would love to actually get you in studio and have this actually happen. Totally. So we're happy to have you in here. Yeah. So, um, Go ahead. Oh, I had a question. So, like, just from people who aren't from the, like, from Toledo or from Michigan, uh, how would you describe, like, the music scene that you guys kind of grew up in? Like, what inspired you guys to have the music taste that you do and to write the music that you do growing up in from where you guys came from? Oh, man, the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very, like, I don't know, I guess there's just nothing really else to do um, <laughs> in the Midwest. You guys have basements. <laughs> we, do, we do have basements. basements are, that's pretty sick. We also sick. have load-out cellars, which makes it very easy for us to load in and out from shows. <laughs> that's pretty sick. Um, I like... <laughs> So wait, they don't. Yeah, have, they don't have basements in California. No, no, really? no. Or brick because buildings. of earthquakes. Oh, wow. oh that's yeah. true. Yep. True. I didn't think about that. Wow. wow. Yeah. When, so <laughs> when I used to live in Illinois, I thought, oh, when I, I used to live in Illinois, then I came to California. I was like, where do I put all my stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. That's why no one parks in their yep. garage. Yep. Really? Uh, oh, wow. But I don't know the the local the local scene where we're from is is actually very, very it's actually a really really good scene. Really um, strong. A lot of the bands are very supportive of each other, um, so like they'll come out to each other's shows, and you know buy their merch and stuff like that, and then not only buy it but then wear it, oh, like out. Totally. <laughs> that makes um, you feel good. Yeah, 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 sure. and like it's it's just like all across the board, it's very mm-hmm. very supportive, which is awesome. Um, That's great. Like you don't get a lot of that out in <laughs> L. A. It's, it's, it's very hard. Well, there's so many different LA, bands. L. A. New York, that, like, Boston. Nashville, Mm-mm. just the big music places. Yeah, are it's just it's a totally different like it's mm-hmm. just it's I see that big business it's music and it, sometimes it kind of sucks. Like, yeah, it's, it's cool it's, to it's have like, like super the saturated and really stuff. awesome mm-hmm. like. Well, I mean, it, 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 scene you know, you have to look at it. Everyone goes to with all the shows. Pros and cons. I mean, the pro is you can go to a show any night, anywhere. Like, yeah. you, oh, it yeah. can be a Tuesday night at five o'clock, and, and you're like, well, Imagine I'm gonna. Dragons will be playing at the Hollywood yeah, Bowl. I'm while gonna pop down Fall to the Roxy and see at the Forum or whoever. You know, you know like, so you can just go wherever. The sad part is there is music everywhere, so it's almost less special. Yeah. Like if a big concert comes to town, you're like, oh, well, they'll be here, you know, and next month. Kids get less into it personally because they can just go to shows. Yeah. And like we're it's spoiled here. LA people <laughs> kind of have the same thing. If they don't really know you, it just they like, cross their arms and kind of bob their head to you. If they don't know you right away. Well, yeah. I mean, like coming from Alaska, we have no music. Like our our music scene up there was like '80s hair metal bands, like Night Ranger and stuff like that. <laughs> <Rage>. and, <laughs> and like bluegrass music. And so like when bands go up there, like Jane's Addiction was up there last night, and my mm. dad went, and it was raining, like pouring down rain like close to hail and people went and still stood out there because we don't get concerts and I everyone's like, like i'm gonna go hang out at jane's addiction but a rain to an alaskan is kind of like like not that bad no but it's not fun i guess right. <laughs> standing in the rain for two hours during a concert it's not fun no matter where you're at i think that would be fun we need that in california yeah, <laughs> some, some ra- did you see on twitter it was uh, uh california is the only state to uh to have flooding and be in a drought at the same time <laughs> yeah, yeah. But how about that's so 24? unfortunate sorry about that guys <laughs> so personally so you guys talked about growing up you know in the music scene there and you know the lack of <laughs> um personally for you and your instrument i guess we can kind of go down the line but for you and what you do who would you say inspires you as a musician and Helps Ooh, you. Just all of you individually. Yeah. This is oh, always the hardest question. question. <laughs> uh, you want you want to start with me? Yeah, yeah. Go for okay, it. Going so down the line. Around the spot there. I mean, um, I grew up mostly playing guitar and more of a guitar background. And what really got me going into music is just like the like the '90s grunge, alternative scene. Yeah. More sp- uh, specifically, Nirvana probably is what really got me yeah. into like picking up an instrument and wanted to do something with it. That's so sick. So that's mm-hmm. my inspiration. Um, Sweet. Mia. 
when I when I first picked up guitar, it was the uh, Jack Black movie School of Rock that yeah. really, really got me to Dude. want to do it. <laughs> let's rock, let's rock today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but c- kind of from there, so like, um, I, and I kind of like first like really got into like rock music like through what they showed in that movie. So like, Jimi Hendrix was the first really big influence, and then I kind of like my music just ev- taste evolved with the the decades. So then I had a really big Guns and Roses phase. So. <laughs> Actually, I love that being here, just walking down Sunset Strip. Sounds, that's where it all went down. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds very familiar. Um, and then, uh, and now I'm kind of in the um, really all over the world. I listen to like jazz things, like Frank Sinatra and that, and um, a lot of indie bands like Death Cab and Coldplay. Mm-hmm. And then bands kind of like in our style too, like Sleeping with Sirens and Pierce the Veil and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What about you? Okay, so uh, <laughs> anything that let's get down. Okay, to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I've definitely like transformed over the years as far as my mm-hmm. music goes. But when I first started, I definitely started right on the same page with Dan. That's actually when we first kind of met. Um, we were both like very into Guns and Roses and Slash in general. That was like what Slash. really made us like really really love guitar. Um, and then I actually like got really, really into Avenged Sevenfold for a while. Ooh. And, um, oh, that's yeah. basically like their self-titled album, um, is basically what I learned how to play guitar on. Um, so that was pretty cool. And now, now I listen to a lot of like alternative mm-hmm. rock <coughs> music, um, like Amberlynn, that's my favorite uh, band. Love Amberlynn. Yep. Um, and then... You know, like he said, like Pierce the Veil and all those kind of guys. So, well, I think as you go, I mean, personally, from my experience, and I think you can agree with this, is when you start playing music, you're very focused on a certain artist. It's like, I want to be mm-hmm. like them or I want to be like this. But as you get into music and you start playing more, you learn to appreciate all types of music. Even oh, if you don't totally. play jazz, you could sit and listen to jazz for hours just totally. because you appreciate it. Same thing with really any. I can't do country. Genre. I can't do it. Y- you'll learn. I can't you'll do learn. Country. I couldn't do maybe, country until maybe I moved. I'll have a phase. I, I couldn't do country until I went to Nashville. When you go to Nashville, you just what, suck yeah. it up what and I, you deal with it. What I can't do is uh, African rave rap. Uh, d- what's their name? Oh, Diane Word. Diane Word. Yeah, it's the only one I can't listen to for hours. Diane Word <laughs> is something special. But yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. Is you you evolve as a person and yeah, you know, your music. I mean, like I started with classic rock. Mm-hmm. Like I just. When I started playing guitar, he wanted was to just, get girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, you play guitar just so you're like, oh yeah, yeah. I want to be that rock I know star. Like, you were literally like, like obsessed with the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Well, I know Foo you still Fighters, are, and I, the first big solo I learned was the solo to Hotel, Hotel California. And, <laughs> okay, yeah. But After that, we played that song, a couple changes, times, like we're never I think playing it, it again. It changes a lot when you start writing. <clears throat> yes, mm-hmm. totally. because classic rock is an era that won't. I mean, you can draw influence from it, mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Uh, Black Keys or like I mean there are tons. Yeah. Arctic yeah. Monkeys. Steel Panther. Steel Panther. Steel Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Steel Panther. I mean a lot of bands do. I mean, but the Foo, the but it's never do, it's but never gonna Panther. come back in the same way. Yeah. It's and definitely when you an start writing, piece. you kind of just realize, realize oh I this is so much fun to learn and mm-hmm. to like learn a cover of yeah. just to kind of get my skill up there. But totally right, when you write, mm-hmm. it's you gotta go somewhere new with it. Mm-hmm. What about you, Rachel? Yep. Um, Vocals. I would say, <laughs> yeah, I have so many different influences, but I started off, like, my family is very into music. My grandma was a singer. My uncle was a drummer. So they kind of got me into it with the classics, like mm-hmm. Alice Cooper, Pat Benatar. Like, that was one of the first songs I ever sang was Hit Me With Your Best Shot. By Isn't Pat it everyone? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, we see, were, like, we were 12, in the and, and first we two covered songs Hit Me did With Your Best Shot. Hit Me With Your Best Shot in Hotel California. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's funny. Were, it's like a Back staple. It's yeah. a staple for, like, any first band. If you're going to, be like, do that hard rock stuff, you're, like... Um, I love rock and roll and hit me with your best shot are like your two like main songs. Yeah, for sure. And, and then, continue. Uh, Kiss as well. That was another oh, yeah. one. <laughs> rock and roll and I. Um, but eventually, like I started to evolve in my musical taste. Like mm-hmm. I switched over to like Green Day mm-hmm. and bands like that. And um, now I am like really influenced by Amberlynn and like Pierce the Veil, yeah. Avenged Sevenfold. So it just developed. But it definitely started off with my family, like, inspiring me. I always sang when I was a little kid. Like, I would just belt out to little, like, songs. And stuff, I know. So. Just I remember <laughs> sitting on the back of the boat with you, and I knew you had a great voice, but then we did um, All I Wanted by Paramore, and you hit that high, and I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> oh, goodness. Goosebumps everywhere. Because you have an snaps. incredible range, and it was Thank ridiculous. You. But I had to point that out. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Drummer? Um, I, I, <laughs> I would, I would He's definitely say that I can revert to like Dan with his, like, once he saw, once I saw School of Rock, I was like, man, that like, that's, 
that's cool. Like, you know, yeah. so, um, and I, w- when I was in fourth grade, I, um, I wanted to be in the band at school mm-hmm. and they actually, it went from being fifth grade, but then they started accepting mm-hmm. fourth graders. So Uh-oh. I started playing clarinet. And I got in trouble almost on a daily basis for walking through the back of the class and flicking the snare drum. I went to a private school, so they got me for like anything that they could possibly do. <laughs> like no, so, like didn't have your shirt tucked in, dude, or no belt. no belt. See, he went to like, private school, so he yeah. Gets I, I, I feel you, yeah. dude. No khakis, boots, no, no, like, you know, <laughs> khakis. Like that. Yeah. So I mean, that was one of the biggest things. And so when you're a kid, you want to do everything you are told not to do. So it's I was cool. Like, I want to play drums. If your parents don't like it, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, and then my parents were actually, my parents were actually really like into, into me playing drums. And so like, they were really like, they backed me and I was like, all right, for sure. So I started when I was nine and here I am. You got to think like every awesome. parent's got to be a little crazy to get their kid a drum set <laughs> when like, when they're young. Cause Honestly, you yeah. don't know, you don't have no idea what you're doing. You're just playing and hitting everything as hard as you can. And it just sounds Terrible. So bad. Well, here's the thing. There's like, you know, guitar, piano, whatever. It might sound bad for a little while, but then it gets better. The two instruments that will always sound bad until you can actually play are drums and mm-hmm. violin. Yep. Violin. Violin. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm also a cello player, so. Okay. Yeah. So, I started there. Again, yeah, that's kind of like the the basis. And I mean, I guess I've been uh, like influenced. I mean, like my dad yeah. really got me into 80s when I was young. He bought mm-hmm. me Casey, uh, Casey Kasem's Top 40 CD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And or CDs, it was a du- it was a two pack. Oh, oh. <laughs> forty <laughs> songs. Up, up. So yeah, so that was uh, I mean, that got me in, and then I discovered like Avenged Sevenfold and Slipknot, mm-hmm. and then Joey Jordison was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, so then I've, I've obviously like evolved since then, listened to all sorts of different stuff, but mm-hmm. you know. So you guys kind of all nice. come from different backgrounds, but then met in the middle. Like you yep. know, yep. you all have the thing that really connects you. So when and it comes down to I, go for it. Okay. Yeah, go for it, <laughs> okay. Lauren. Um, when it comes down to writing, what does your writing process look like? I mean, I was do you... just gonna ask that. <laughs> oh, we must. I write all the music. All the no, <laughs> um, no, yeah, the, the drummer. And then you just give it to him and say, "Play this." I, I got this. <laughs> just write it out. No. See, when the drummer everything. writes all of the music, <laughs> is when you get like. A hit song? No. That's what you. I know that's what you wanted to say. No, that's no. when you get a really awesome um, drum beat or crazy time signature and just kind of. A, that's when you get like a circus or vibe song. Yeah. Like good, a, good example. But know. how do you guys I write? Drums. I mean, I know some people start with <laughs> lyrics and then bring the music into it. Some people like to start with music. I mean, how does that work with you guys? Um, well, uh, we actually we just got done writing uh, this past January. Um, awesome. We went up to a. Uh, we actually did a kind of very different process than we've ever done before this time. But I love how it worked. Um, we went to a log cabin in like the like deep oh I've of always the wanted the to do that like a retreat type of thing <coughs> yeah Wait, so yeah. we did a, a three week retreat oh it was and negative cabin? 15 degrees by the way yeah <laughs> we're wait, in Michigan yeah, yeah. Michigan yeah oh my so it sounds God. exactly had, like gloves and stuff that on. sounds <laughs> exactly like how Lotus Butte wrote their last That's record <laughs> have you guys heard yeah. of them yeah Lotus Butte? yeah they they wrote Rumors of the House <coughs> doing the exact same thing, so like really? going out to a cabin. Yeah, dude, it was. It I've was always wanted to do surreal. that. Actually, I know that's how um that's how Event Sevenfold did their uh, White album too. So yeah. it was just kind of like we heard of a bunch of bands like like you know going away and just getting away from everything to yeah. write. Yeah. So you were like trapped in this cabin. Yep. At negative fifteen. And the cabin, cabin was like was literally about the size of this room with all of our gear <laughs> and like. Everything. Did you guys get like cabin fever? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So yep. who would yeah. be the first one to die? That's my real question. <laughs> well, there. If this were a horror movie, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, how long were you guys there? First, I, yeah, that's uh, just yeah. under three <laughs> weeks. Huh? Just under three weeks. Oh my! And you wrote oh. a whole record. Yep. Yeah. Did yeah. you go outside? Um, very minimal. Very minimal. <laughs> I mean, it, w- it it ranged. It wasn't always like frigid, but I mean, even during the day, it was still like 12, 15 <laughs> degrees at max. Yeah. You know, yeah. no more than that. So. But the writing process. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, being like in this, you know, place where really all you have to do is write music, mm-hmm. it really, yeah. um, you pump out a lot of really cool things by doing yeah. that. Um, so, usually what we'd start, we'd, we'd wake up and practice what we had already wrote just to kind of nail Make that sure it's down still further. relevant and yeah. good. Just, you know, just keep playing things because, you know, the more you play something, the more it evolves and yep. gets to where you want it to be. So, we'd spend the first few hours doing that. And then we'd spend about the b- bigger chunk of the day, um, uh, working on new stuff, so it would pretty much be me and Cody sitting down and just working on guitar riffs and stuff, and getting something we liked, and then uh, showing it to everyone else, and just mm-hmm. kind of building it from there. Yeah. And then kind of um, in the 
later half of the evening because there, there were still a few other cabins around in this thing like mm-hmm. so it wasn't like just us so um like we'd turn the amps off and then like work with an acoustic and like focus on vocals and stuff yeah, yeah. so that you didn't drive your neighbors you crazy are, yeah. Yeah. you are forgetting one crucial part though the Uh-oh. eating crucial no not the eating <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty crucial though uh th- i feel like we like we're very hard workers with anything that we do, mm-hmm. um, so and that's the same thing with writing. So we always have to have like a mental break. Oh yeah. And the way we do that—it's draining. I mean, it, writing it, it is a really draining is. process, yeah. really and people don't believe that. But then when you start writing on the regular, you go home and you're tired. Yeah. You're just yeah. done. It's seriously like so exhausting. It's a big mental process. Yeah. <laughs> but what we what we do is uh, Dan and I will sit down and write the worst song we can possibly <laughs> think of. Yeah, it's we just for really, fun. Really we try really and make stuff sound like, bad. We, we make. <laughs> That's the, great. The worst <laughs> songs that you have ever heard. It drives people nuts. <laughs> That's like what. That's so awesome. At the end of the day, are you just got like okay, separate corners, like everyone just like spread out and don't like. No one talk. No one talk for an hour, and are no. you guys like pretty like cool we, with it? I mean, yeah, we're, we're pretty cool chill. With we it, usually yeah. like just pop in like a like DVD like Shrek or something at the end <laughs> of the day and just together. chill yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> did you, a, did you get to know your night. neighbors well? Were they like, yeah, oh, that's we did. The, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the that's the writing they band. Were super we did. Nice Actually, to us. the thing is, we didn't have a shower, so <laughs> yeah. so they had to like let us Every shower at their house. Oh yeah, yeah. So we definitely That's get funny. to know them. So you'd be like, like hi, I know we don't really know each other, but we really smell. <laughs> we use your shower, please. Yeah. I mean, Did like, they were they were family friends of Mike's. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, my uncle, my oh, okay. uncle owns the cabin that we were at. Oh, so, like, oh they, okay. They, they, so they like, initially I knew. <laughs> just some stranger. And, yeah, yeah. And so, like, they had a general idea, but they, at first they were kind of like, mm, and then once they found out, like, mm-hmm. what we were all about, we're all, like, nice, respectful kids and everything, they started, like, inviting us over, and it was funny because by the end of the trip, they were, like, really jazzed up and like it, it was cool because i could tell like you know it was like a small town up there small community so when someone's able to be like yo we've got a band up here writing an album next door we went to the like, grocery you know, store for fun it was yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah seriously so. that was that was our fun <laughs> how big the was the grocery store, store? What's that? Was the grocery store big? Like normal. I mean, it was a normal grocery. size. It okay. was just something to do. Oh. So it was more. It was like a. It was like a grocery store, not like a convenience store. It was like an actual. Yeah, like, it was a grocery yeah. store. It was just like, something that we just like. We had to get out of the cabin every mm-hmm. once in a while, <laughs> and like it got to the point where Mike and I went to the grocery store every day. Every day. <laughs> it was like, hey guys, you we're gonna do reg- our trip. You want anything? Yeah. We'll be back in like three hours. You become regulars at a grocery yeah. store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> all right. Well, before we ha- have you guys play, I want to play a quick little game with you guys, if okay. that's all right with you. Um, this is a little game we like to call <laughs> How Well Do You Know Your Band Member? And oh, so I have written oh, up man. a bunch of generic questions, and I'm going to ask each of you, by yourself, you can't get help, a question about one of your bandmates, and you have to answer Now, it. I'm expecting all of you guys <laughs> to do really well, given that you spent three yes. weeks in a cabin <laughs> I will say, I will say Chris is the he was newest not member. He okay. was not yeah. present. I just joined, like... I joined the band and they just Actually, like, all right, see ya. The day we were driving up to the cabin, um, we let him know he was in the band. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> so awesome. I gotta miss out a little bit. But you still have to get it right. So, I mean, we're still yeah, counting okay. on you to get this right. So, Rachel, we're gonna start with you. Okay. Who is Dan's celebrity crush? Hmm. I really think he likes Haley Williams quite a bit. <laughs> Never wrong. Never wrong. Is she correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I mean, Mark pretty Mark. good. Pretty good. I mean, hmm. I mean, you did pay to spend four days on a cruise with her. I mean, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, Pretty much. Okay, Dan, what is Cody's favorite fast food restaurant? Um, back in the day, it was definitely Burger King. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. You're, I mean, you're not all really on that fast food game anymore. So I kind of quit fast food, but mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, I do know. It's just not coming. Um, man. Not just a burger. Well, the funny thing is, here we can't say oh, one in. Is it, is it Whataburger? Oh. Dude, Whataburger. What, what what is, Whataburger? What the thing is, Whataburger normally we guy? say one in doubt, in and out, but you guys don't have in and out, do you? Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. actually, no. I've heard not just a burger. I read an article. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I know where he's going. Yeah, Whataburger yeah. is like in and out, but for the Midwest and the South. Like, if you're in yeah. Texas, apparently, that's where you go instead of in and out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. White Castle is Whataburger is like Texas's. Texas's. Uh, in and out. out. Yeah. Have I read they were going to open an in and out. I just in had it for the first time yesterday. Was it yeah. glorious? It was amazing. Yeah. It was did great. you first time ever? Yeah. Did you ascend into heaven? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, we're going to Texas. <laughs> like, you got to have Whataburger. I'm like, what's that? Like, All right. What's that? There is nothing Cody. comparable what to is, In and Out. Cody, what is Chris's favorite chick flick? Oh, oh. Dude, you know this one. <laughs> Uh, he you know he knows his own. <laughs> Do I? Maybe. <laughs> I know. I brought this it up one. a few Come times on, on that trip. Veronica Vaughn. 
Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if it's considered. Would it be? A, I don't know. It might be considered a chick I'd, flick, but I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say legally blonde. Ooh, no. <laughs> oh no! Uh, <laughs> anyone want to steal this question right no now? Point is it Cody. Mean Girls? Definitely Mean Girls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mean Girls. Oh. Right. Okay. So He's quoted it so many times. I, I think so I think Rachel deserves the Cody's point. point. Oh, right. I think she snagged it. All right, Chris. What is Mike's favorite sport? Actually, it's <laughs> pretty well, positive. Actually, actually yeah, I, I know. Oh wait. Uh oh, you this gotta get trick, it right this now. Is a trick question then. I'm, I'm gonna steal this if you don't get it. Oh, uh, I want to say he doesn't have a favorite sport. All right, I'm jumping in. Mm-hmm. It is wait, snowboarding. Wait. Oh, wait, oh. wait. Oh. Who was right? I mean, realistically, like, if you want to go with a favorite sport, yeah, snowboarding is definitely one of my, like, yeah. up there things. So we're going to give it to I'm Dan? Just not, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm just not good at, like, sports. Dang, so, like, you know, I can't shoot a basketball. <laughs> you guys are tied right now. You guys I are can't, doing really well. I can't shoot Both a basketball. Both of you guys got two <laughs> extra points. Um, Mike. One extra point each. Yeah. Mike, what is Rachel's biggest pet peeve? <laughs> What just drives her crazy? Uh, when people make fun of her voice. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time, because you, like usually she'll be like, she'll say something, she'll be like, hey, someone shut the door. I'll be like, someone shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I don't sound like that. <laughs> just get in, into a really deep voice. Yeah, I don't sound like annoying. that. That's, that's a pet peeve. <laughs> All right, we'll give it to you. All right, round two. Rachel, what's Cody's favorite reality show? Man, <laughs> I don't think he watches that much I don't reality even, TV. I don't watch TV in so, general. So yeah, he lives in a cabin. Okay, what if we cut out? The, <laughs> what if we cut oh, out the reality part? What if it was just TV show? Does he have oh, a favorite okay. TV show? He really liked Dexter. <gasps> yep, my laboratory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'd say oh, that wrong gets Dexter. the point. No, wrong Dexter. <laughs> uh, wrong I'm still, a, I'm still a little kid. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good show, though. That yeah, that was a good show. Fond memories right there. Dan. All right. What is Chris's favorite animal? Um, the lion. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are still tied, by the way. You can see it on his arm. Yeah, you I guys. Two lions <laughs> on the arm, so. Oh, dang. <laughs> Cody, what is Mike's shoe size? Ten and a half. <laughs> yeah? Without he it. knows. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Chris, what's Rachel's favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, I probably just, I don't know, chocolate? I have no idea. No, it's chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, Ooh. man, I have no oh. idea. <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh. close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, what is Dan's favorite soda? Oh, you oh, got this, come dude. On. Oh, come man. on. <laughs> if you don't get this, I'm yeah, scooping come in. On. <laughs> <laughs> See, but I... Oh. Not have this one. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I would actually. I'll take two answers. Here. I was about to say this. Yeah, I know, There's I know a couple different. Um, I would say root beer and Dr Pepper. Yep, you got it. Yep. Yeah. Both? Nice for sure. Doctor Pepper. All right. So, so we're tied Rachel between Rachel and Dan, and, Dan, and we have a tie. Have three. We have a tiebreaker question. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man. It's 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 a it's a t- version of that. Um, so each of you have to answer this okay. about the other person, obviously. Um, so we'll start with Rachel. Okay. Rachel. What is the most embarrassing moment that has happened to Dan while on stage? Um, he <laughs> he has definitely fallen like quite a few times, I would say for sure. What he, kind of what kind of he fall? He knows though? what mine is. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, everyone uh, he's <laughs> also hit me in the head quite a few times <laughs> with his guitar. That's happened. Would be I, I, this I'm familiar with too. that. Yeah. That yeah. Oh. Dan totally pooped on his shirt. Once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That happened. That was happen. a white button-up shirt. What has it gone to? We, what has this gone to? We were opening up for the Misfits, and, and just right before I, it, I had, yeah. yeah. I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a stomach bug. I had a bit of a stomach bug, and I was in the bathroom, and it, it just shot out and bounced back. Yeah. You pooped on your shirt. Well, not yes. directly on. It was just yeah. the intensity was oh. so much it just bounced back. All right, all right. What's what's Rachel's story? Is it gonna be before that? we spend five minutes well, um, laughing? <laughs> uh, Rachel, um, we were playing in Detroit, and um, during the last song of our set, um, she'll like it kind of breaks off into like this instrumental section. So she'll just she'll just kind of run around and like she'll jump up and like do the splits in the air, mm-hmm. and she split her pants open. <laughs> Completely oh in half, oh just yeah. two different. <laughs> oh wow! Pieces. Did you go on? To, did you go on with the show? <laughs> I, well, it was I'd the last song, so uh, luckily it was 
<laughs> yeah, I just like I pulled my shirt down and yeah. then I just bolted off stage. See, that's why that's why you don't wear crop sweatpants. tops because then you can't do anything. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. try this. It just like <laughs> put your back as far yeah. as yeah. All right, who wins? Might make it worse, though. Who wins? It's I'd say it's a tie. It, it's a what? tie. Man. You guys yeah. know each other pretty well. <laughs> that was really good. Like when I, one I'm person impressed. didn't know it, the other yeah. could just swoop in and Some be like, oh, you should know this. Some bands come it's in here like, job. oh yeah, we've been playing like siblings five years. Siblings will come in here and not know each other. Yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. yeah siblings right. a lot of time will like not even get any answers right. Well, you guys let's have hear some, some music instruments. We want some music in your hands. You want to stall? Would you like to play something <laughs> for us? What would you like? I guess. Taylor, why don't you just go? Yeah, stall, stall, stall. Okay, as we're stalling, um, can you give us your social media info so people can know where to find you and. <laughs> Yeah, Danny has okay. this one. So um, yeah. uh, our official website is our24band.com. Okay. Um, you can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash our24band. Um, Twitter and Instagram is uh, at our24band. Yep. And um, what else? Um, and right now, um, we'll probably talk about this more later, but we are running an Indiegogo campaign for our new album, and um, that is our24album.com. Okay, very cool. So make sure you go check out the Indiegogo campaign because you guys are funding your new album, right? Yep. All right, very important. <coughs> very important. So yes. make sure to go check that out. And you guys are also on tour right now. So yes. what are your next kind of upcoming shows? Um, actually, later on today, as soon as we're done here, we're uh, bouncing out to um, uh, Long Beach. Sweet. And we're playing at a venue called Di Piazza's. If oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with Di Piazza's. Yeah. Okay. So um, I hear it's they a have a cool little pizza. dive. They do, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're getting I love it. Yep, yes, we are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike uh, likes pizza. Then we Pizza. have uh, two off days between here and San Diego, and then mm-hmm. we play in San Diego on Wednesday, and then we um, move over into the Southwest in Arizona and stuff like that. And Very cool. Then we Very keep cool. going and go up the East Coast. So so you got a nice long trip ahead of yep. you. It's uh, about an eight-week tour in total, and wow. yesterday was the start of week three. So Okay, so you, awesome. have, do you, so you have all the show dates and everything, on, I'm assuming, on your website and Facebook yep. and yep. everything like that. All over. You can find it right there. Okay, awesome. Well, what do you guys want to play for us first? Um, you want to go <coughs> Okay, um, we're going to play a song that is actually going to be on the uh, new album that we're recording. It's called uh, Let Your Heart Run Wild. Awesome. We'll take it away. Do you need a vo- um, Do you need a vocal mic? Nope. Okay, sweet. Just double checking. Yeah, no, you don't want to hear him sing. <laughs> <laughs> you really that, don't. That's your job. He sounds like a dying walrus. Cody's, Cody's the backup. <laughs> <laughs> it literally won't stay up. How about you just hold it? <laughs> I can switch up a bit, probably. Uh, oh, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. whenever you're ready. Sweet. 
twists and turns, dead ends and new beginnings, walls and mountains that can't be climbed, getting lost in the chaos of it all. Sometimes we fall flat on our face, but even birds with broken wings can they Tomorrow is the start of a new life. Tomorrow is the answer. Can you feel? Let it. We're always searching for ourselves. We're always searching for. So I think we have time for one more yeah. song. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So whatever you guys have up okay. next. Yes. We, we just got so caught up talking to you guys. We just <laughs> like time flew out the window. This next song that we're doing is called uh, Take Me Away. Um, okay. We've had it out as a electric single for about a year now. And You have um, a music video for this one as well, right? Yep. yep. And we are putting out a music video and uh, acoustic version of this in a few weeks. So Very awesome. Cool. Keep your eyes out. Awesome. awesome. I tried so hard to put on my best face to make it through this fight when the world is full of darkness all becomes a blur a faint spark of light in a hurricane and even if the sky is falling I keep
was awesome. Well, thank, thank you guys so much for coming on and hanging out with us. We already got your social media and everything. So, guys, make sure to go check out their Indiegogo campaign because that's really <laughs> important so they can put more music out yep. in the world. Support local or non-local music because music is awesome. Do I have time to Young say a few music. words about that? Huh? Do I have time to say a few words about that? or Few. Okay. Few. Yeah, um, few. pretty much. Uh, <laughs> um, so sad. We are um, in September and October going out to uh, New York City to work with the producer Dan Corniff. Um, mm -hmm. He has worked with... Uh, Paramore, Pierce the Veil, Sleeping with Sirens, Breaking Benjamin, among many others. Mm -hmm. um, and as a band that is currently unsigned, um, we face um, the challenge of not having a label to front us the cost to record this. Um, and we'll be incurring um, about $16,000 worth of expenses by doing this. So um, any little bit helps whether you're just sharing the page or if you can contribute. Um, Every dollar we are counts. so like thankful really for it. All right. Well, everyone, awesome. make sure to go check that out. Um, we'll have their links up on our Facebook, so you can go donate if you feel so inclined. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming in and hanging out with us. It's fun to actually have you in studio and not have your van break down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again so much. I'm Lauren Dare Owens. I'm Justin Tanucci. And my name is Taylor Reyes. And this is The Music Project. We'll see you later. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours.